All right. Well, welcome to the podcast. We have uh, we've all officially survived Easter. We, we have. made it through. Oh, Betty, it might be helpful hey. to have your mic. <laughs> um, so we had yeah Easter weekend last weekend. We're posting a little late this week. It's actually Wednesday. Uh, recording it now. Yeah. Um, post on Thursday. Yeah. Well, I may even uh, I'll probably end up editing it this afternoon. I was posted when I get trying done. to get it so out today. On my yeah. Wednesday, but later than normal. Um, we had we had Monday. Ministerial team had Monday off uh, because of Easter mm-hmm. weekend and. We didn't get to take Friday off for Good Friday because we always have. So, anyways, we had Monday off, um, and then Jeff was supposed to be out of town this weekend. But I was I was not um, supposed to be here. Yeah, but, but I am. You you are here. Evidently, We're glad you're here. Evidently, uh, my plans and the Lord's plans didn't line up. <laughs> <laughs> That's where James says, "Yeah, make your plans and just always add at the end if the Lord wills." <laughs> That's right. Obviously, it didn't Lord this week. Yeah, we were, uh, we were. We <clears> were. <throat> Julie and I normally take take the week off after Easter and just kind of recoup and rest and relax a little bit and get ready for the rest of the year and or at least until the summer. And um, so we Sunday night we left and of course had lunch with the kids and, mm-hmm. and all that all that stuff at our house. And then we Julie and I went on it. We left and we're going to spend the night in Atlanta and get up Monday morning and going down Hilton Head for the week. And. Um, Monday morning about 4 a.m. Julie started having some real bad stomach issues and you know we just thought okay we we called up uh, Brenda and talked to her about it and she's and so we just kind of all made a decision hey do some of these things and kind of we head on down and so we're heading on down to Macon where you pick up 16 and man her uh her her issues her pain was just unbearable mm-hmm. and so I thought nah, it's gotta be it's probably something more than what we suspected and so uh it's just amazing how God works timing wise and all this kind of stuff. So yeah. uh, my mentor in ministry who passed away several years ago, his family has always been like our family mm. and they live in Perry, Georgia, which is below you got Macon, then one Robbins going South in Perry. So it's about 45 minutes, maybe South of Macon and Jerry, uh, his daughter is, is, is Kathy and her husband is Jerry, the Brantleys. They've been great, great friends of ours. And, um, and Jerry's an internist. So I just thought, let me call Jerry, see if he's in, see if they're in town, and he could see you. And so called Kathy. Kathy said, y'all get down here. You know, she called Jerry, let him know. And, I mean, we just drove right into his office. It was just, it was amazing. Went in the back door. Jerry took her in, started taking care of her, got her hydrated, and um, did a CT scan, realized she had a kidney stone. Mm -hmm. So the pain she was experiencing Monday morning, early Monday morning, all day Monday, was that kidney stone moving. Mm-hmm. And um, so once we got CT scans and everything done and got her some medicine, Jay said, you guess probably need to go home and, and get this taken care of because of it was, it was blocking some kidney function. Mm. So 7.30 Eastern time, after I got some medicine and a big old cup of coffee from Starbucks, I turned it around and we headed back home. <laughs> so we just drove all day Monday and got home about one in the morning. And yesterday was kind of a blur, got her to the urologist and, um, sure enough, you know, we were looking at a procedure yeah. either Friday or Monday to get that removed. Uh, but praise God, she passed it last night. Mm-hmm. Mm, good. So, good so she's doing much better today Good. and, uh, we'll just be here this week and, and probably try to get, try to go down next week Yeah. Um, and, and take a little time off. And, yeah. So not um, quite the resting week that you were planning no, on. No, <laughs> and and I did not realize. Uh, of course, we've all been talking about this today. How worn out we are. Yeah. You, you know, when you're in the moment and you're in in all of the, all of what's happening in Easter weekend uh, with Good Friday services and Sunday services, and you know, praise God, we had over eighteen hundred people on campus um, Sunday morning. Wow, which was yeah. an amazing mm-hmm. an amazing day for us. Uh, three great services and. And it was just, it was awesome. It was a great day. Um, but you don't realize how it wears you down. Mm-hmm. And the men, and I think, and you guys understand this, and I think our church people understand this, the mental preparation going into it. Yeah. On top of everything else you're dealing mm-hmm. with, that ramps up that week. Normally that's just kind of how yeah. Satan does. I shared with you guys, I, I think probably one of the biggest uh, tools of, that Satan uses with us is distraction. Yeah. yeah. And, and how he can get us pulled over. And, you know, Madison was closing on their new house last mm-hmm. week, and that was had some issues with that, and we were helping her with that, and just just all kind you know, life. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but those things seem to ramp up. And it's like as soon as Easter weekend's over, <laughs> oh, the sun yeah, right. comes out and <laughs> mm-hmm. all those things go away. And yeah. you go. Well, and then kidney stones come. 
Well, and then a kidney <laughs> stone. Yeah, and then that, and then that. But you just kind of go, really? Yeah. Like, seriously? Is it was it really targeted oh, yeah. at a weekend? Oh, yeah. Mark but, and Cameron and I were practicing for Good Friday service on Thursday, and I'm like, who is singing that weird bass note? It was my ear. Really? My left ear had, I guess, fluid in it. I'm like, oh, wow. oh kind of a no. <laughs> I could tell she was thrown off because she was trying to sing, and I was like, what is wrong? Like, it was this, like, weird, like, <laughs> almost twitch. Are you saying that Patty wasn't sing? hitting her note? No, she was hitting it, but <laughs> I could just tell she wasn't feeling right. And every time I yeah. asked about something, she's like, yeah, if, if I could hear, I'd be <laughs> better <laughs> shape. Man. So even into Friday night, yeah. I still had that weird humming. It almost sounded like a jet plane just idling. Oh, you know, wow. In my ear. Yes. And it was still there Friday night. So I'm just praying all day, Lord, I just need help. I don't yeah. know what else, I don't yeah. know what else to ask well, for. You couldn't tell. Because there's a distraction. And that's yes. what it was. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because once I just, you know, focused on him, I didn't hear it while I was singing. Wow. But as sure as I sat down, it was like, whoop, there it yeah. is. <laughs> well, you guys did a great Crazy. job Friday night and Sunday morning. Yeah. And it was really, it was, you know, every, the whole team did. It was, it a, was. It was yeah, a great it was. weekend. It was a good, uh, good weekend overall. Friday, I think went, yeah, went really well. I was telling, uh, we were talking after the fact, and you know, there's just there's always something that happens. Um, I guess Patty's ear, could, you could say, was <laughs> one of the ones that happened this year. But there, there always seems to be something. And for me, as a perfectionist, like going through any service, I'm yeah. gonna pick out something that yep. didn't go right. You're a perfectionist. Um, what? Uh, what? Uh, at times, I, you know, mm, I am tell. shocked. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Another what? revelation today. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but going through Friday, it, was, it like it was just, it was very smooth. Like the, How the many times have I well? said, Cameron, just do it? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't. Just do I it, can't dude. Just Quit worrying about it. Just do let it. Me, I got to prepare first. Well, but here's plan. the problem to all of our listeners. <laughs> oh, ten, uh, uh, how many we have? I believe more, <laughs> more than 10. <laughs> but there is, I, I, I tell the team this all the time, and I have to tell Cameron this a lot. There's behind the wall. And there's in front of the wall, mm-hmm. right? There's behind the curtain and there's in front of the curtain. And so we're concerned about what's in front of the curtain. What do people see mm-hmm. on a Sunday morning, on a Friday night? They don't see what happens behind the curtain. That's what we deal with. Mm-hmm. So a lot of your stress and anxiety comes behind the curtain. Yeah. Because I can tell you, nobody knew Friday night or Saturday or Sunday morning that there was, you know, mm-hmm. Patty had an ear issue or whatever. And I think those are the things that we have to remember. Yeah. That, but... We live behind the curtain, right? That's just that's just where we live. Yeah, and behind the curtains where all the pr- the, the prayer and the, absolutely and, that's right. Uh, but uh, all that to say, Friday was I think one of the smoothest. Like I don't know that anything from my perception really yeah. went quote unquote wrong. No. Like, it was a um, a very well um, spirit led mm-hmm. service overall, and then Sunday was was great. So um, yeah, uh, the team as a whole did well. Our, yes. our staff, all of our um, even congregational team members that helped with parking mm-hmm. and yep. door greeting. And Our deacons did a great job deacons, serving. Yeah. A lot of volunteers. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And this Friday service was, our Good Friday service this year was probably different than most of them because this was a continuation of our series that we yeah. were in. Yeah, right. So it uh, people kind of came with the, with that anticipation mm-hmm. of, you know, man, we're 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 finishing up, and mm-hmm. it's just a part of this part of the series. Yeah, for sure. So we got a lot to talk about today. We can talk about uh, both of those messages. Um, we haven't also mentioned basketball or wrestling. Have you noticed that? I did notice that because Caroline's out of grateful. the tournament, so I have nothing to say anymore. <laughs> and that's why Patty is much more talkative today yeah. than she has been lately. <laughs> yeah, Caroline's out, so I have nothing to say, and wrestling's over. So. Yeah, and nobody cares. Yeah, true. about wrestling, but so last week. I cut so much out. So, Did you? Um, but for anyone that does listen regularly, we talked about sports for a good 15 minutes we last did. week. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. And they I did. kept cutting it down And when I was editing it and finally got it down to, I don't even yeah, know what it is. It's going to be interesting that, <laughs> not to get into this, but now that my buddy's son is is out of college, you know, the, he won his last national championship for Iowa State. Like, will, will I be interested in, in watching it? Yeah. Because I really just watched, I just watched, I love, love to watch him wrestle and compete. But now that he's out, I'm like, eh, I don't really have any reason. Like, I didn't watch any of the other finals matches. Mm-hmm. Maybe a few yeah. of them, but not, just didn't really have a, a big desire. Olympics are coming coming up. Yeah. The Olympic trials are happening. There's a last chance qualifier for the trials this weekend, and then Olympic trials will be happening in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So that'll be good. Like, David will be in that, but um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. <laughs> 
I have. I mean, I've, I've retired, man. I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. I keep telling myself that. Yeah. Keep telling yourself that. I know. It's <laughs> a lovely thought. Bro, yeah, but here's what I did do. I threw my wrestling shoes away. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Dunzo. Actually, you know, I went to a high school practice before their season was over mm-hmm. thinking, I haven't seen, the, you know, the, the, the kids and all mm-hmm. that, and I need to go up there. Yeah, I'm done, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. That's, that's, why I, that's why I went home that day and threw my shoes away. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't need to put these on again. <laughs> that's funny. Anyway, all right. Nice. Uh, well, Friday night. Yeah. This this could be a, a bouncing all over the place podcast anyway. Yeah. Because we're <laughs> that's all right. not all in it. But, yeah, we got uh, two messages to talk about, Friday night and Sunday morning. So we'll um, we'll start on Friday night. And really, uh, we were talking a little bit before. Um, and our life group in these podcasts, like, it's it's been – kind of tough for me to, to prep for these. Cause mm-hmm. it's hard to figure out, like, this is obviously a revelation to John, um, about things to come. And right. so it's, it's, there's a hard balance of like, uh, just knowledge of, of things to come. And then there's a lot of the unknown that we can speculate about. Um, but just, uh, knowledge of things to come versus like, how, how does this impact my life? So maybe mm-hmm. that's a good way to start us off. Um, how do we keep this from just being future knowledge about revelation of the yeah. future uh versus like how does this impact my life today yeah yeah because you, you don't want even when you talk about revelation you don't want it to just be biblical information right right so we want it to be transforming and and so how do we do that i, I think that we this is a generalization so i don't think it's necessarily us but just in general i think there was a shift because uh, let me kind of get the end at the beginning the way you do that is you you remember and realize that it's all about Jesus. It's not mm-hmm. about us. That's right. And so if it is, then all of this points to his glory mm-hmm. and his plans, and and that's enough. Yeah. Like, that's enough. I don't need to know how do I apply the rapture to my life? How do I apply the great right throne judgment to my life? Right. Now, to say that, that doesn't mean that we don't look for applications so that we can be the image bearers for Christ we need to be on this earth while we're here. So yeah. it's a both and not an either or. But I think what I think what, you know, we saw a shift theologically back in the eighties, uh, when all the seeker movements seeker movements hit and you had the rise of Willow Creek in Chicago and you had the rise of um Rick Warren and Saddleback. And so everything became very how to ish. Mm-hmm. How to fill in the blank. And and so when that happened the, the, you know, the kind of the seeker movement made theology shift a lot more toward us. Yep. And it was all about us. So this is a book about how I live my life. This is a book. This is the how-to book about here's how I'm a good person. Here's how I'm a good wife, good husband, good fill in the blank. Which is funny because it does have the, that information in there. But it's, 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 that's not the purpose of the book. Mm-hmm. The purpose of the book is give us the revelation of, of, of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. And God's revelation to mankind. I mean, that's the purpose of the book. And so, but again, that's when the rise of true love waits happen and all these types mm-hmm. of things. And so how easily we shift into looking for that and that begins to drive us. And then all of a sudden we become a people of morality and not a people of Jesus. Yeah. Right. So all that's been shifting back in the last 10 years but you come to this kind of information and you go, okay, so how do I apply the great white throne judgment to my life? Mm-hmm. Well, there may be. <laughs> Hopefully it, you don't. <laughs> yeah, well, or it may just be that, Jesus, thank you that I'm not going to be there. Yeah. Number two, thank you that you're a just God. So, so it, That's right. it says more about who he is than it really does about anything about me. Right. You know, that he, he doesn't have to do that. And as a matter of fact, he doesn't do it for as we talked earlier, yeah. like the Antichrist, <laughs> not not there. He's yeah. he's already been thrown in the lake of fire. Yep. Uh, the false prophet mm-hmm. in the lake of fire. You know, so those are two right there that we know they did they didn't get to stand before God and the, Jesus in the great white throne judgment, which they were going to end up in the same spot anyway. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's it's all about Him. It's all about Jesus and His justice and His His worthiness to to sit in that place the only person who could sit in that place and execute that judgment. That's why judgment was given to him by the father. Yeah. So I think it's really interesting. I was, Julie and I were talking about this, how like in John five in John five, Jesus is talking about the great white throne judgment. Mm-hmm. Well, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't know to connect those dots, mm-hmm. 
you don't know that's what he's talking about in John 5 when he mm-hmm. talks about some will rise to a resurrection of life and some will rise to a resurrection of death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, man, like, like we look at Revelation, and we've said this before, as being, you know, for mature believers, really heavy stuff and all that kind of stuff. And here's Jesus throwing it out mm-hmm. early in his early in his public ministry. Yeah. Like he's introducing, you know, the people to these concepts early, early, early on. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think we make the mistake of setting them aside and not getting into them because we think, well, we don't want to confuse our people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Jesus was talking about it. You know, I mean, he talked all about all of that in his yeah. first three years. Yep. So Old uh, Testament prophecy speaks to that as well. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. Yep. And, and, and Jewish listeners mm-hmm. would have understood that. Yeah. Because they understood about a coming judgment and they understood about a coming reign on the earth. Yeah. So the things that we scratch our heads over, like a millennial reign, mm-hmm. the, Jewish, the Jewish follower of God, com, com, number no one did they get it, they were looking for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that, that, that's why they missed Jesus because they missed the... They missed the 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 part before that. Yeah, they completely skipped the part of Jesus coming, living a sinless life, dying on the cross, raising from the dead, and going to be set at the Father. Like they completely missed that piece because it wasn't in their picture. Mm-hmm. Their Messiah was coming, jump all that to establish the millennial reign on earth. So that's who they're still looking for. Mm-hmm. So this this intermediate part when he came and said hey i'm here no like, no you're not mm-hmm. he said that i came to my people and they didn't know me yeah mm-hmm. they didn't recognize me and so you kind of go How, how's that yeah. because everything that was prophesied about him jesus fulfilled that mm-hmm. but they weren't looking for the fulfillment of prophecy they were looking for the king to come and set up his yeah. his his reign here on the earth yeah so the concept of you know those types of things like like you're right, Patty. They would have been familiar with that. Mm-hmm. They knew there was a coming judgment. Like that that didn't surprise any of them. So I, I think for us, you know, we just because we don't have that background or we've not spent a lot of time in the Old Testament, we don't realize you know those things were pointed to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's a good perspective too. In the the last uh, few weeks in our life group, one of the questions that I asked, I've asked because like we're in week four now. So to an extent, like my uh, wrap up in life group in week one is about the same as it's going to be this week. Like <laughs> go and make disciples. Yeah. That's what we're here yeah. to do. And hopefully this Jesus us, is awesome and go and make disciples. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it really does. It puts us, puts life in a perspective of um, what the end of the story is. Yes. And so like this life isn't just about us living the American dream yes. and mm-hmm. all these things that we focus on. Now, again, we still got to pay our bills. We still got to do right. the things that we got to do, but also it's, it, this isn't the extent of what we have. We have so much more. Yeah. But, coming for us as believers. But but think about this, man. What other area of our life, it doesn't matter what it is, your marriage, your parenting, your whatever, your financial life, whatever. What area of your life do you get to know the end of the story? Mm-hmm. I mean, think about that. I mean, think about how awesome that is. Yeah. That like we've always said, Man, I wish God would just let me know how this is going to end. And a lot of times we, when we say that, we're referring to like my kids' lives, mm-hmm. my, my life, you know, whatever. And when you step back and look at it, you go, he did let us know. Yeah. Like he's let us know how it all ends. Like we don't, we're not living this life wondering what's going to happen. Yeah. We completely 100% know what's going to happen. Yeah. And so what do we do in the midst of that? We just... We just live it out. Yeah. And now, so to your point, so you, you, we got to pay our bills, yada, yada, all that kind of stuff. So, this, you know, this is tax season. April 15th is coming up. And so, you know, as I'm dealing with that right now, you kind of go, man, how's that, how's that fit into all this? And, and it's so funny. And you know what? As I was walking out the door this morning, supposed to be in Hilton Head, headed down, headed down to my accountant's office. Here's the, here's the thought that came to my mind. Like it, it was like the Holy Spirit just reminded me of this. He said, "Render unto Caesar's what is the Caesar's, and render to God what is God's." Mm-hmm. And then I said, "Okay." I, you know, I said, "Okay, Lord, you, I mean, you're you're right. I mean, this is just part of our life. This is what mm-hmm. we're commanded to do." 
And then he came back and said, and don't forget, I paid Peter's tax out of a coin I got out of a fish's mouth. So I got you. Mm -hmm. Like that was, a, as I'm walking to the car, mm -hmm. that's the thought I had this morning on my way to my accountant's <laughs> office. It's like the Lord's just saying, yep. dude, are you serious? Yeah. Like, you, you know this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you concerned about? You know yeah. this. Right. So don't, if, if I paid Peter's tax from a fish, yeah. like, you're good, bro. <laughs> I'm, I, he probably doesn't say bro and dude, but, yeah, right. you know, but relationally, he's like, I've, I've, I've told you the end of the story. Yeah. So yes, we have the future end, but I think we still have the intermediate end. We, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have all the answers, right. You know, because he said to us, like, I got one job for you. Mm -hmm. Just bear my image and reconcile people to the father through me. Right. So, and then all the other stuff I got, I, I got you. Right. Right. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added into you. Yep. And we forget that. Just do what he's, do what he's asked us to do. Yep. You know? And, I, and, and he said, I'll take care of the rest. And so anyway, it, it's, it's the, it's the tension. It's the distraction. It's the, just the living of life when, when we do have the end of the story. Right. Which is the inspiration for your upcoming sermon series. Living before we leave. Right. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I was mapping all that out earlier today. So yeah. Because while we're here, we've got a task. We, we've got something to do. That's right. Right. And it's not to build our kingdoms. So. Yeah. Man, if we could just get that. Yep. You know, and it's hard. There's, there's such a tension there. For sure. Yeah. And again, the last few weeks, we've uh, kind of answered the question, too, of like, what, what are we learning about God in all of this? What yes. do we learn about us? What do we learn yeah. about God? And then what does this mean for us? So what do we learn about God? We've learned that he's a just God. Mm -hmm. We've learned that he is a worthy God. Yep. Um, we've learned that when you go to battle with God against God, it ain't going to work well right. for you. When you go to battle with God, it's going to end in, in his favor. Um, and so there, there's still very practical things mm -hmm. that we learn, yep. even looking at um, things that are to come. So, Well, yeah, and even good. the depth of the, of the explanation of the great white throne that we have. Yeah. You know, there are other things like, if you were given a list of 10 things that you could, that you could ask Jesus for more detail about, mm -hmm. probably the great white throne judgment wouldn't have been on your list. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's like, there are 10 other things we probably could have thought we could think, right. I wish I had more detail in this. Yeah. But, but you always get to me, you always have to pay attention to those areas where he gives us great detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is one of those areas where it's very clear what it is, who's going to be there and what's going to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. So I had one, I had a question asked in our, uh, in our group last week that, uh, I, I just never thought of so curious on, and I don't know if we have any specific, I don't think we have any specific answer to this, but okay. just want to see where maybe where you land on it. But we, we, you know, have heard at least the term of the age of accountability. Um, so when a, you know, a, a baby or a kid under the age of accountability dies, um, we would believe that they go to heaven because they didn't have a mental um, opportunity to respond to the gospel. Um, how does that play in? Or I don't know if you want to dive any deeper into that. Or but how the question that was asked to me is how does that play into the rapture? So when the rapture happens, um, are those that are under the age of accountability are they raptured as well, or are mm -hmm. they still here to then uh, continue through the the uh, tribulation? Yeah, man, that 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 is a really good question. Yeah, uh, I don't know who asked that question, but they uh, they because I've never really I've never really thought about that. Yeah, I neither. Um, because I know the people that are going to be left, you know, after the rapture, there'll be all those people who, <clears throat> at that point in time, had not made a decision mm -hmm. to respond to Christ. Now, children children under the under that age would would not be. A part of that group so do they get raptured up or do they, or do they stay here there, there's no way i can answer that question one yeah. way or the other yeah. my inclination is to say that they get raptured up with the body at that point in time mm -hmm. because at that point in time uh i think it would be people who uh it, again in that time period would all go up that either have made it you know had, had responded to the gospel of jesus christ or hadn't had an opportunity to at that point mm -hmm. yeah 
uh, to reach that certain age. I, I don't know that's the case, mm-hmm. but um, I would think I, w- I would. F- to me, information kind of points to a logical conclusion of saying that. Yeah, but I don't really have anything to point to to say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I I just threw that on you. I didn't. Yeah. No. No. I, I think I, I think that's a great question because you know through the tribulation going into the millennial reign. It'll only be people who are believers at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. Now, in the millennial reign, there will be children born, right? Right, who are born just like children are born today. So there'll be an opportunity for them to respond to the gospel, yeah, through that time. But um, and at at the end of the millennial reign, Satan will be let loose, and he will gather the nations against God one more time. So there are obviously people who will not be followers of God and Jesus in the millennial reign, mm-hmm. right? Which is crazy. <laughs> because Jesus is reigning. Yeah. Right. But Satan's bound. Yes. Yeah. But once he gets out, there's still that opportunity. So yeah, crazy. Um, so going back to the uh to the Good Friday message, we talked about the great white throne judgment. Um, there was a few uh just parts of that passage uh that just to get some clarity on. So talking about the great white throne, it says mm-hmm. in that first uh in that first verse, verse eleven of chapter 20 then i saw the great white throne and him who was seated on it from his presence the earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them what does that mean that the earth and the sky fled yeah. away yeah everything that i've read about that um i mean you know there, there, there are some things that a lot of commentators will agree on regardless of their theological position yeah uh, even in revelation even in revelation wow. surprisingly <laughs> yeah 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 <clears throat> yeah and even in revelation They'll disagree on some things, but agree on some things. Yeah. Um, so this is one that that most agree on that this is where the the first earth and the first heaven are destroyed. Mm. So you got to think we've gotten down to kind of the end of the revelation and the eschatological calendar and all that's happened. The only thing that's left that hasn't been done because the lino reigns over, Satan has been cast in the lake of fire. And the only people who have not been dealt with, the only thing that's a remnant of the old world are the are the people who've rejected Jesus mm-hmm. and the old heaven and the old earth. Hmm. And then and so Peter talks about how that will be destroyed and it'll be destroyed by fire. It will just kind of explode and be gone. But but that that is where this happens. Okay. So heaven and earth. So basically in this new world, as this thing is kind of finalizing. And I, and I think that's why it says there was no place found for them mm. because they're tainted. And so there's no place found for anything that's tainted. Mm. So it's got to go. It's got, it, and, and it's almost as if it, it, the picture that's painted, which I think is pretty cool is that because of it being in the presence of Jesus, it, it couldn't stay there. Yeah. It just, it just disintegrated. Mm. So it it wasn't about the the depravity of those places as much as it was the greatness of Jesus, mm-hmm. and it just and I think it said it fled from his presence mm-hmm. because it had no place, and I think that that's wrapped up in it's it's just still it's just fallen. I mean it's you know Paul talks about in Romans I think it's Romans eight what we call cosmic soteriology, which is the salvation of the earth or the the you know he says that the earth groans for the day of redemption. Mm-hmm. So creation groans for the day of redemption, that it groans to be new because it's fallen. And so so that's where you get the the, the time point of the heaven and earth being destroyed. The, the old heaven and earth being destroyed and the, and the new heavens and the new earth are about to come. Yeah, gotcha. It comes after the great white throne. Yeah. So you've got, you've got new heaven, new earth, and then new Jerusalem on the new earth. Right. Um, if... if Jesus is reigning. We're all on the new earth. What's what's the purpose of the new heaven? Well, we're uh, so you get into the weeds now. Yeah, yeah it kind of gets into the <laughs> because you've got the new Jerusalem coming down. Yeah, uh, and th- and that that is the you know that's the the heavenly holy of holies, basically where right. where God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will be. The bride of Christ will all be there. So. Um, we don't really have a we don't only have tons of clarity on okay it's sitting on the new earth so obviously the new earth has a purpose Mm -hmm. and and there will be a a purpose for that new earth and the new heaven on the new earth and all i know is what it says yeah and so to to speculate beyond that 
a lot of people try to do that because it talks right. about nations coming and going and kings bringing their glory in. Mm-hmm. Um, but you got, I, I just think you have to, I've learned, man, that, that it's better to keep my mouth Take closed than yeah. to speculate because <laughs> as soon as you speculate, somebody mm-hmm. way out there that you don't think is listening to your podcast hits you up on Twitter and, and it's one of these guys that lives in this world and go, yeah. You're, and like, no, I'm good, dude. <laughs> yeah so it's amazing to me man um i'm not on twitter but i'll jump on there every once in a while just to see for whatever reason and it is amazing to me how many people um are on there arguing about eschatology (laughs) Mm -hmm. like it's crazy i just i'm like don't you have anything else to do yeah you know but man they're all in there (laughs) getting extremely uptight over yeah Stuff that things that we don't have clarity on. Yes. <laughs> and there are people dying around us Correct. who just need to hear the gospel. Yeah. 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 Just right Instead now. Of a legalistic yeah. argument. Yeah. Right yeah. now, do your job. Yeah. You know, quit calling people that think there's going to be a rapture ignorant. Yeah. And quit, you know, like all just just be you've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. So go do your ministry. You've not been given given the ministry of a completely explaining eschatology. <laughs> You've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Go do that. I mean, God is reconciling the world to himself through his son. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been given the opportunity to be a part of that. Yeah, for sure. And let this kind of thing, let these kinds of things motivate you to go do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, speaking of who's going to be there, you don't want anybody there. Like you don't <laughs> want anybody at the great white throne judgment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause like we said about that, it's, you know, yeah, it's a courtroom, and there's a judge, but there's no lawyers, and nobody's arguing their case. Right. Yeah. It's completely about sentencing, judgment, and sentencing. That's yep. all. That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. Another uh, just piece of clarity on this, and there's a couple times throughout Revelation that says this, but two times in this passage, it mentions death and Hades together. Mm-hmm. Um, we think of hell, but why does it why does it reference death and Hades? Are there is there something separate there, or is that are they two in the two in the same like we've seen with other things? The way that I've understood that, and, and it's just the way I've been taught, and, and, and I've read commentaries that seem to uh, corroborate this. Um, death, and, I, and I, do know, I do know this to be true. I have confidence in this. Death is what holds the body. Mm. Hades is what holds the soul. Mm. So when it says death and Hades, it's meaning that, because you got to think for us, for us as believers until we're, until we're raptured, until we're given our new glorified bodies, like even the people that have died and they're in heaven right now, waiting for the for the rapture to happen. Yeah, um, death still has a hold on them mm-hmm. because death is still holding their bodies in the ground. So Jesus says the it it all won't be done because even though even though Jesus has has defeated death, hell, and the grave, it didn't hold him in the grave. Yeah. It's holding us in the grave. Even though our souls are with are with Jesus mm-hmm. right now, those who have died, their bodies aren't. Right. So what's holding their bodies? So death is still an enemy because, like that that passage of First Corinthians, we always read at funerals. First Corinthians fifteen mm-hmm. talks about death. Where is your victory? Death. Where is your sting? Well, that's always talked about after we receive our glorified bodies. Mm. Then we can say. Death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? Yeah. Because right now, you know, it, it still has. A, so so to your point, to that question, when it says death in Hades, you're talking about the resurrection unto death that they that that is happening at that point. Gotcha. So so where death is holding their bodies like death holds all bodies at this point until we're, we're resurrected. At that point, th- that will be their resurrection. Mm. So death and Hades means their bodies and their souls come back together. Gotcha. Okay, so they're resurrected. Not like we were resurrected. We were resurrected into a glorified body. They will be resurrected into a body. Dude, how, how, like how horrible is it, would it be if, if like you, you've been living in your soul now? You're, you're in hell now, so you're, right. you're, you're tormented. And then you get reunited back with the body that you had before. <laughs> You're like, yeah, man, if this wasn't like, if it wasn't bad enough, right. I got that guy again. <laughs> and th- then they're resurrected unto death just so that they can now go suffer 
a physical a physical suffering just as we will enjoy a, a a physical blessing of eternity with with God those people will, will suffer a physical not a spiritual but spiritual and physical suffering for all of eternity wow yeah dude, it's 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 nothing to play with no for sure um so then uh backing up then before that it says uh and the sea gave up the dead who were in it death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them uh I guess just reading that, I assume the sea would be maybe the bodies. What what's the sea part of that that's giving up? The, it's really interesting. The it, is, it is interesting that that it references that. Um, you know, most people feel like the literal translation of that obviously is is it's covering when it says that it's covering all possibilities of where dead people could be. Because mm-hmm. okay. not not all dead people get it in the ground. Yeah. Right, some you know, some who die at sea. I mean, you got to think if our globe is seventy five percent water, mm-hmm. there are going to be a good number of people who who have died and their bodies maybe have, you know, what now they're decomposed, they're gone, they're they're gone back to dust. Yeah, they've been eaten up by shark samples, whatever. Do you think that could be pointing back to back to the flood when the obviously the the whole earth was flooded? Could it could be? But here's here's what's interesting to me. I think that's a great thought, Cameron. But I think I think a second thing that's interesting to me is that it says the sea gave up its dead. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then John says when the new earth comes, there's no sea. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So if it specifically references the sea giving up its dead, then John says in the new earth there's no sea. I, th- I think there's something there. I, mm. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But I think there's a connection. There could be a connection there between those two things. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, yeah. That, so that that was our Good Friday message. Um, I don't, <laughs> again, I don't know too much application there other than I don't want to be there. Well, I, I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the obvious application yeah. is don't go there, yeah. right? But I think I think the picture of, you know, and, and we didn't have time to get into this, and, and I've never been one to dive into this. But when I was preparing for this message, um, it, almost every commentator I read agreed with this, that that there are degrees of suffering in, in the lake of fire. Mm. That because this, this, this judgment is all about guilty and here's your sentence. And, and not everybody's, now everybody's sentence will be eternal damnation in the lake of fire and complete separation from God mm-hmm. that are there. But some will be worse than that. I don't know how that could, I mean, how could it be any worse than right. that? You know, um, because I've even said in the past, I mean, hell is hell, fire is fire. How does it get worse mm-hmm. than that? Mm-hmm. Somehow it does because Jesus several times uh, references certain groups being better than certain groups because of what they were exposed to. Um, you know, he says, woe to you, Corzan, woe to you, Bethsaida, woe to you, uh, Capernaum. There was a time when Jesus w- did that. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah will be better than you yeah. in the judgment. And you think, my goodness. So, mm. like, there's definitely, and I think this is a, this is a haunting message and reminder mm-hmm. to people, especially in the United States. Now, to everyone, but but the fact that you will be held accountable to what you were exposed to mm-hmm. when it comes to the gospel, when there is a church on every corner, especially in the, in the in the Bible Belt, as we talk, that that there will be accountability to what you were exposed to. Mm. I think I think is is something that we need to pay attention to. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so then looking at kind of the flip side and I'm, I'm glad you made that connection when we, we, uh, about the, what we talked about good Friday and then that tying in same time, uh, into what we see in revelation five, when, when you were first talking about kind of the overall flow, I'm like, so we're just going through this and then like jumping back to five. Cause that's a yeah. good passage or what, but tying those together and seeing that they're at the same time. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, um, so getting into that obviously a complete change of, of direction for what we're going to be seeing, um, as believers. Um, and so you mentioned, 
I don't remember you mentioned it in your message, but uh, when we were talking about that, like this is the only time we see tears in heaven when John mm-hmm. cries, yeah, um, and weeps loudly because no one was was worthy to open yeah. the scroll in his mind at that period. Um, and then you see the lamb. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting when you read. We didn't spend a ton of time in John in Revelation four, <clears throat> but when you look at kind of the overall build of the book of Revelation. I think it's I think it's good to to have just a kind of a general overview of the book, right? So Revelation one is, is just is the introduction of what's about to happen, kind of what I call the introduction of the players. You know, the father's described, Jesus is described, <clears throat> and then John's experience. Revelation two and three are the letters to the seven churches. Mm-hmm. Revelation four and five are 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 in the throne room of God, mm-hmm. which which you know most people consider to be the first heaven. What's what's what we would consider heaven right now, the throne room of God. So John, Revelation four, John sees uh, God sitting on His throne and the worship that is happening in there. Revelation five is where he where they where the first thing John says is, and I saw a scroll in the hand of of Him who sat on the throne. Mm. Okay, so so then um, Revelation six through. 18 is the uh the enacting of what was on the scroll hmm. which is the tribulation yeah and then 19 20 21 22 begins the wedding banquet of the lamb second coming millennial reign great white throne and new heaven new earth hmm. so you know if you kind of think about revelation in those chunks yeah it it really helps you at least from a higher level, right? Kind of have a have an idea of its flow, yeah. And and the reason I knew it would fit is because we talked about everything post tribulation, mm-hmm. right? Well, all of that. The only way all of that can happen is that somebody was worthy to open mm-hmm. the scroll, right? Because if somebody wasn't worthy to open the scroll, none of that stuff happens, right? Because what was in there, what's really cool is, yes, Revelation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are a part of the revelation. Mm -hmm. But the actual enacting of what's going to happen in the future starts at 6. Yeah. It starts in the scroll. So that's how big, like, that's how big a deal the scroll was. Mm. Because the scroll was the rest of the revelation. And you could imagine John... Being there now, it's hard. It's hard to fathom that John was there, and he was completely distraught because he truly believed nobody was worthy. Yeah, you know. But it says we did a search. Yeah, I mean, searched. And it's weird. It said it. We searched in heaven, and no one was found worthy. Well, the Lamb was there, though. You know, it's like you got to be. You know, but that's why I don't necessarily think this was. An impossible situation that all of a sudden, poof, get, they got the answer. Mm-hmm. I think it was the building of anticipation of the entrance of the Lamb. Mm-hmm. You know, it, so in, in theater, whatever y'all call that, Patty, where, you know, you kind of build it all up and mm-hmm. the crescendo is like, so I think you had these dilemmas, but I don't think it was like an, but as far as John was concerned, he was just wrapped up in this moment. Yeah. Mm. And it just, I mean, just, you know, because he's looking around and, I mean, he, he sees the one sitting on the throne. He sees the 24 elders and all the redeemed church, and he sees, and he's like, nobody's worthy. Well, let's go to earth. Nobody's worthy. Mm-hmm. Under the earth, nobody's worthy. And then he said he just, man, he just wept and wept yeah. and wept. And <laughs> I love it. One of the elders was like, dude, quit crying. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know about, I don't, this is heaven. We I'm, don't do yeah. that. What, what is wrong with you? I like that guy because I think, I don't know if it reminds me of my dad. Like, stop crying. What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's like, stop crying. Look. <laughs> the Lion of Judah. Mm. You know, and that's when he goes into describing Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because they all knew. And, and you kind of <laughs> you kind of wonder if, like, John's down there just weeping, and they're looking at each other going, <laughs> <laughs> like, is he, like, is he really, like, is he really crying? Yeah. You know? And, uh. But what's weird, I don't know. You can't see, this is where my mind goes, dude, because I start, you know, I'm a time travel guy. I, dude, I was so, about to go there. I was about to go there. So if the 24 elders, if the 24 elders represent the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles, 
John would have been there. So was John looking at himself. Uh, they say that, that's where it gets. <laughs> and what about that man? So what about John seeing what he saw? Yeah, he saw the twenty-four elders. So he saw uh, the leaders of the twelve tribes of Israel, and he yep. would have seen the twelve apostles. Did he look up and see Matthew? There's, you know, there's Andrew. There's Peter. Right. There's there's me. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you took a st- step further than me. I was just thinking, like, did he go to that point and like, well, <laughs> like when we are in this scene, will we see John and then we'll see like Revelation John <laughs> looking right. at this weeping? Like, will that be part of the or or? Well, we won't see any of that. We just get this. We just get the written well, that's version. True. That's true. Yeah. But so, but like, did John actually time travel to that, so or he, was this all just a like a a vision, a revelation, just in his? head kind of thing like was he actually there or did he just see it and write it down i i'm because i'm a i'm a literalist i'm gonna say a that he time travelist was i'm not gonna say time tra- <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna inject time travel in but at the end of the day i think he he was there yeah. he saw it so i mean he said I, I was you know i saw heaven open and i saw the throne room yeah so I mean, again, that's a weed that we can't for yeah. sure. But so I mean, now, I, but now I, we're going to put you in uh, historical pre-trib time travelist. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, anyway, we 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 don't want to go that, into that. But, <laughs> but no, I I think it's just I think it's really neat that John's emotion came through because he knew it mm-hmm. doesn't move forward. Yeah. Unless somebody yeah. can open this scroll. Yeah. And I think, and what I loved that I, that I read as I was preparing for this is that the person who, and Julie told me, she goes, okay, when you were talking about somebody who had the authority to enact what is in the will, Mm -hmm. you said executor, it's executor. (laughs) (laughs) There's not an executor of a will. It's not like you get execute like the person. That makes sense to me. It does make sense, but she's right. It is an exec, it's called an executor, not an executor. (laughs) so yeah that's great but so like an executor (laughs) of a will has to like i I was that for my grandmother and so whatever she wrote down it was my responsibility to make sure it was all done just like it was written down yeah Yeah. and i had the authority to do those things Mm -hmm. i had the authority to sell her house i had the authority to you know whatever it was Mm -hmm. that that was my job okay so somebody had to be worthy to execute that's why i think it executor makes sense but yeah makes sense you don't me. say ex, see now now <laughs> executor but anyway that's why somebody that took that <laughs> had to have the authority to do what was written in it mm-hmm. yeah and that's why they said who's going to do it yeah and then here comes the line of judah mm-hmm. the root of david the yeah. victorious one yeah. pretty awesome and um, John's best friend. Yep. Dude, can you imagine? Like, I think, again, I I, I think about that relationally. I know we we, we think about it eschatologically, and it's a right to do that. But but don't, man, don't miss the the relational piece Mm -hmm. of that puzzle. Mm -hmm. That that John looked up, and and that was Jesus. I mean, that was who he lived his life with. That's whose mother he was taking. He had had taken care of. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the one. I mean that you know he ran to the tomb and, and he spent 40 days with him after his resurrection and now he sees him yeah. you know and he sees him as as one who's like a lamb who had been slaughtered yeah yeah and i love it i love that it says he was among the people mm-hmm. like he was just in there dude he was in there with them yeah and he kind of and he kind of comes out of the crowd yeah you know i think that's a cool picture yeah it's really cool you know, John wanted to just go up and hug him, man. Just, right. just, just go up and just run to him and wrap his arms around him. Yep. And uh, Jesus just goes up and takes that scroll. Mm-hmm. I got this. Yeah, because his best friend had been gone for what? Yeah, this would oh. this was mid nineties. Yeah, and you're talking about mid thirty, you know, thirty three. Mm-hmm. I think you know, so yeah. sixty years. He hadn't seen his best friend in over sixty years. Yeah. That's awesome. And then to see him in that light too. Yeah, man, it's awesome. yeah, absolutely. 
Um, I also, also thought it was really cool. Uh, just never thought about this, but talking about the uh, the songs that they sang. So at the end of yeah. at the end of that passage, that the the redeemed are singing a different song than the angels yep. are singing. So we'll actually be singing a different song than what what the angels are singing because of our experience with Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Like, I mean, and, and you know, and it's funny how the world paints the picture. It's the only way they know how to paint the picture that when you die, you become an angel because that's the only that's all they think is in heaven. And it's like, no, yeah. we, no, I don't want to be an angel. Man, we are we are 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 the bride of Christ mm-hmm. who has had the opportunity to experience redemption. And the angels have never experienced that and never right. will experience that. Yeah. They weren't made for that. We were made to experience mm-hmm. Jesus in a way that the angels weren't. Yeah. And so our song, we're singing about our redemption. Yep. Which I think is really cool because, you know, he even says it in the in the song that we sing, man, that right. we're singing a song of the redeemed. But I want you to think Which about it. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a new song. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you love that? Yeah. Because what's interesting is that in four, they're singing songs mm-hmm. to God. But there's a new song you mm-hmm. sing to mm-hmm. the Lion of Judah, Root of David, the victorious one. So then you've got the angels singing a different song. Then you've got everyone who was just thrown in the, in the lake of fire singing a song. Yeah. Dude, check that yeah. out. Yep. I mean, and that's where... Paul taught in Philippians 2, right? Every knee shall bow. Every mm-hmm. time we'll confess right. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine me going back to the great white throne judgment, being there, and the last thing that you do before you are thrown into the lake of fire to live out for all of eternity your sentence is to bow your knees, fall on your face, and claim Jesus as Lord. And then you go to an eternal hell for the rest of your life, for all of eternity. A physical suffering completely separated from God. Yeah. And we're going to argue about eschatology? Right. Dude, mm. go be a part of the ministry of reconciliation. Yep. Like at the end of the day, we're going to stand before God and watch all of this happen. You know, watch watch this being executed. And we're going to think back on our arguments. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. Yeah. So, yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to claim that man. Like you said it, Patty. I mean, I mean we've got lost people that are dying every single day without Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yep. That God is, God is wanting to reconcile them to himself through his son. And we're going to sit and argue about stuff we can't explain. Yeah. Right. Crazy. Yeah. It's cool too. Uh, I think a lot of times and actually in my, my, uh, Bible app. I've got the the second portion, what the angels are singing, and everybody singing um, highlighted. But we miss we we I don't know why, but we skip over the new song that we sing in that time for whatever reason. Um, when that like understanding the context is is so powerful for us. Yeah, that worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain, and your body was uh, and. You, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and. T- uh, Man, I can't read from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God and they shall reign on all the earth. And then after that's what I have highlighted, but that's so powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's incredible that like that, that's what, that's what we get to sing as the redeemed people of Christ. That's only our song. Mm Yeah. That's only our song. Yeah. I love that word that, you know, there's different translations will say redeemed, ransomed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But, but it's all the same. I mean, he paid for a people. Yep. From every tribe, tongue, nation, land, country. I mean, there's no, uh, <clears throat> and, and it's funny how people talk about, uh, people want to talk about how there will be distinctions in heaven, that the Jews will have a certain place and we'll have a certain place. And you're thinking, why in the world, how in the world would we bring that back into yep. the context of eternity? Uh, it's, it's, it's such a worldly view. Yeah. When at the end of the day, man, he, he died for all, mm-hmm. yep. you know, without distinction. And he makes that very clear. There's no distinction between right. Jew and Greek and he, you know, and he goes into all of that. There's no distinctions. Yeah. And yet we, we want to, it's funny how we want to make heaven what we want it to be. Yeah. Right. We, we want to, we want to bring our elitism into heaven. And I think our culture, and of course the enemy, the prince of the air which is Satan wants to drive our, the way we think about these things. Yeah. So that it will drive our actions. 
Because if we can get ourselves distracted on the wrong things, we got to spend more time reading about things that we can't understand and keeps us from being involved in the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, let these things be a great reminder to us about how awesome our God is, how worthy Jesus is, that we, that we have been saved and live for the Lion of Judah, the root of David, and the victorious one. So you've got the, the one who comes with all power, all authority, and all victory. Mm. That's, that's the one that redeemed us yep. and gave his life for us. And so now it's our responsibility to just to do what he's called us to do here. Right. Like, like that's why like, I think the application of, of, of all of Revelation should be just like he said before he left. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you, and you shall, you shall be my witnesses mm-hmm. in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the most parts of the earth. Go ye therefore into all the nation. Go to the Great Commission. Right? And, man, baptize people in the name of the Father, yeah. Son, and the Holy Spirit. Make disciples, baptizing them. Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. And, lo, I'm with you always to the end of the ages. So you've got the instruction. Like, nothing changes the Great Commission. Eschatology doesn't change it. Mm-hmm. Theology doesn't change it. Nothing changes the Great Commission. And if our theology and our eschatology doesn't lead us and motivate us to accomplish the Great Commission, we've completely missed it. That's yeah. exactly right. So we always have to keep that on the forefront. Yep. Like if you don't keep the Great Commission at the forefront, meaning that if everything doesn't lead to this, then I've got distracted somewhere. Yep. If my study of theology and all the isms and all of the all, all, all the stuff that we want to argue about doesn't lead me to the Great Commission, I've been distracted by Satan. Yep. Mm. If my eschatology doesn't lead me to be a part of the Great Commission, I've been distracted by Satan. Mm. It's all like you can't. And I think when it comes to our judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, you know, where we think all of this, all of our theological studies are going to be rewarded in heaven. Not if it didn't lead you to the Great Commission. Yep. Because that's going to, listen, that's going to burn up wood, hay, and straw, just like our pursuit of material possessions. Yep. yep. All the things that we pursue materially we're gonna, are going to be burned up. Because yeah. essentially it is a material possession. It's a material thought process. It like is. In our, in our, it yeah. is. I mean, just read Corinthians, right? They were mm-hmm. puffed up with spiritual knowledge mm-hmm. because they wanted to walk yeah. around thinking that they knew something other people didn't know. And they even called it a secret knowledge. Yeah. Okay, so what does your secret knowledge do for you? Yeah. If it doesn't lead you to the Great Commission to make disciples... Better check your source, brother. Yep. <laughs> yep. Better check your source. Yeah, so I think for all of us, kind of the question to to wrap up this series as a whole, and and the, I think the probably the most applicable thing for all of us is coming back to the title of the series, Worthy. Yeah. Is he worthy? Yeah. yeah, that's right. And the answer at the end of it is he is. He, he is. Absolutely. <laughs> is he worthy? Ryan did such a good job with that. Great he job. did. Yeah, that was great. He did a great job, man. Um, I really appreciated him doing that. All three he, services was awesome. Yeah, he did. Um, but he absolutely is worthy. Mm-hmm. Um, but for us, Jesus, not Ryan. Yeah, correct. Okay, correct. I'm making sure. Ryan's yeah, an awesome guy, right. but I mean, he's, yeah. not worthy to open. Not the in the context of. <laughs> uh, but if he is, if he is the only one worthy to open the scroll that we see in in this passage, yeah. man, how much? Like, why do we ever doubt that he's worthy of us following just the little things yeah. that he may be calling us to? Like, he's he's yes, he's worthy of taking care of our finances he's yep. worthy of us following where he's leading to where you know whatever it may be and so if, if uh for anyone listening for myself i'm t- telling myself this too whatever he's calling you to do whatever that may be he is worthy of that he is worthy of your worship he's worthy of your life um and so this what this life is meant to go and make disciples that's right and so for all of us um if if pr- prayerfully this whole series as a whole gives us a picture of what's to come, gives us a hope of what's to come, um, but should propel us to go and to do what we've been called to do in the first mm-hmm. place, which is to, to go and make disciples. So here's the question. When are we going to do 6 through 18? Mm. Mm. Can't just, like, you can't just leave it out there hanging. Well, we skip four, too, so we got to get four, yeah. 6 yeah. to 18. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We hit four a little bit, but not much. Yeah, but right, yeah, right. the 6 to 18 is kind of the, the, the crux of, of what is going to take place. Yeah. And, and I will say this, man, about Revelation. <clears throat> I think I understand better now um, the blessing that comes out of being in Revelation. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
it's just been amazing to me to watch people respond. Like there's no other book that you can preach out of or teach out of that, that I think people respond. But when you, when you are willing to get into revelation, do pe- people just respond in a way that they don't to other books? Yeah. And I think that's where at the beginning and the end of revelation, you know, there's, there's that blessing attached. It's been blessed to those who, who get into this and read it. And, right. and because I think there's no greater book of hope than the book of revelation. Mm. <clears throat> so we can't leave six through 18 out and go, right. that doesn't have hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. And uh, it, it magnifies his glory and worthiness. So we'll, we'll figure out how to, and I think it'll be a good way to do it because you, you know, you can't take it all at one time, right? Be kind of slicing it up in chunks like we have, I think yeah. it'd be a little better, but we'll get to it for sure. Yep. And in the meantime, it, it'd be interesting to go back and, and hear, surely there's not many differences, but just see the, um, cause you went through revelation on a Wednesday night yeah. a few years ago. Um, we actually have that on the website. I had all those up on YouTube, so we attached those on the website. So if you wanted to go back and hear those, they're a little bit longer messages and uh, more of a Bible more of a study. Stu- yeah, along with yeah, tonight yeah. Content, uh, but you went through the whole book there. So right. uh, there's some, if, if anybody is interested in hearing more mm-hmm. on what we've talked about or even the, the 7 through or uh, 6 through 18, 18 that yep. we haven't, I um, mean, go back and hit that, but yeah, it's been a great it's been a great study. Mm-hmm. Going into it, I'm like, oh, revelation, here we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's been it's been really, really good. Yeah, it's been good, so, man. Well, good deal. Anything else? Look forward to our new series. That's uh, it. We'll be walking through. Yeah, you gave us a little teaser. Let us know what, what are we uh what are we about to walk into. Yeah, we're, we're our our series title is gonna be Living Before We Leave. Until Until We Leave. Living <laughs> until we leave. Yeah. Too. And so just really following up on this our focus that we've had on this is Okay, so what does the what does the scriptures call us to while we're here? Yeah. So so it's kind of the <clears throat> flip of um, being very not ethereal necessarily, but kind of later mm-hmm. to right now. Yeah. Right. First Corinthians does a really good job of dealing with right now stuff. Yeah. And we won't be able to catch all of it. All of First Corinthians it won't be every single verse because it's a it's a long book mm-hmm. with a lot of different topics, but. Um, it'll be topical exposition where we will dive in and we'll walk through in chronological order, yeah. but we just won't be able to hit every, right. every verse. I'm kind of, I'm kind of mapping that out right now. Cause it's, what's really neat about it is <clears throat> it kind of lends itself up to four to five to six week series of different topics. And so we'll be kind of having probably subtopics under the whole mm. umbrella of living until we leave. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that sounds good. Looking forward to that this weekend. And uh, we'll talk about that next week. We'll dive in. Mm -hmm. We'll see you all next week.